Hi, following on from my recent videos on the ultrasonic cleaner, there are a few comments in the comments section about certain components being intolerant to ultrasonic cleaning. So I thought we'd have a look at in this video is whether there's any truth behind that. So the types of components that are likely to get damaged are those with some kind of mechanical element that when oscillated by the ultrasonic bath could become damaged as a result of that. So those kind of components are going to be things like crystals, MEM sensors, uh, maybe switches and relays, although I'm not going to test those in this video, because what I've done here is I have actually designed a circuit and a PCB which has some of these elements in it. So first of all we've got an accelerometer and there are a lot of MEM sensors to choose from. The reason I've chosen an accelerometer is because it is a sealed device and some of the MEMS devices do just purely get damaged by the presence of liquid and although those can be cleaned they're generally provided with some kind of cover over the port temporarily that you then remove after assembly but I didn't uh, find any of those freely available uh, from my usual suppliers so I went with an accelerometer that's fairly easy to test. Then we've got some crystals so we've got three different crystal oscillator modules so you just provide those with power and then you get your frequency out. And then we've got two um, oscillator circuits. So we're implementing the oscillator and then we're actually testing the crystal. And what we're gonna do is test the frequency beforehand and then after cleaning and see if there's any difference, which would indicate that something has happened. And then I've also included a couple of ceramic capacitors. Now, the reason I've included these is not because I think they're likely to get damaged, but they are actually microphonic. So I'm wondering whether there's any opportunity for some voltage to be induced in your circuit as a result of the capacitors uh, being under vibration. So we'll see if we can measure something with an oscilloscope. Uh, I just thought that would be an interesting thing to add in. So this time we're using a PCB way to build the PCBs. I thought it might be interesting just to see what the other suppliers are offering in terms of PCB services. So this time we've got a nice purple PCB and the Immersion Gold Finish. They also provided a few freebies, so we've got the 5th uh, Anniversary badge. Um, that's just got some multicolour RGB LEDs, and these seem to have the chips built in to make them flash. Also got a PCB ruler, and then we also got the solder stencil, because uh, in particular the accelerometer is quite fine pitch. Although we could do it by hand, I thought it would be easier just to do it with the stencil. So the ordering process is pretty straightforward really and PCBWay do offer a whole range of solutions including PCB assembly, flexible circuits and also advanced PCBs, so impedance controlled PCBs and that kind of thing. The ordering process is very slightly different, so you go through and you pick your PCB parameters but it doesn't base these off the Gerber files that you upload, so you go through, you have to select the correct size You've got uh, some extra colour options compared to some of the other suppliers as well as uh, some additional thicknesses which aren't usually available and you can see for a 100 by 100 millimeter PCB if you want five of them the PCB cost is five dollars and then you've got your shipping cost on top of that. Now if you do sign up on PCB Way, they are offering a five dollar voucher in your account when you sign up so uh, your first PCB order is basically free, you just have to pay for the shipping. So the PCB itself took around four days to get manufactured and then about three days to make it to the UK using FedEx. And that kind of three to four days is fairly typical for most manufacturers as soon as you select the Immersion Gold finish because there's less PCBs going through that process and there are some extra steps to take in order to get that finished. So that's fairly typical. And if you do just go for a plain green with hot air solder level finished, I think it's about 24 hours to get one of these boards made. So uh, fairly quick turnaround. And that looks like a pretty decent application of solder paste to me. And you can also see the quality of the silt screen and the solder mask. So uh, everything looks pretty good. And I think we've got uh, good registration of solder paste right across the PCB. So I think we've got really good alignment. And that solder paste did apply really quite nicely, so I'm quite happy with that.
Right, so a little bit of tweaking later with some of the capacitor values and we got the oscillators working properly on the PCB. What we've actually designed here is a PS oscillator using an inverter uh, to drive the crystal and then the crystal along with these two capacitors here form a bandpass filter. We've got a resistor across the inverter which means that the inverter operates in its linear region and that means it has some gain and then we've just got a resistor here to limit the current through the crystal to stop it being overdriven uh, which can cause it to oscillate at an overdrive frequency. Uh, the actual value that I ended up using here was uh, 470k and this needed to be 10 meg to get it to work properly. The capacitor values were pretty much okay at 22 picofarads, that's all I had anyway. And then the output from the oscillator is fed through a Schmidt trigger inverter and then that gives us our nice output that goes out to our uh, oscilloscope and it eventually will go out to the frequency counter. So the plan for this test is to individually measure the output frequency from each of these oscillator blocks and I can individually power them up by moving the jumper across so that there's no possibility of interference between any of them. And also I'm just going to check that the accelerometer behaves exactly as expected. So I'm only going to look at the Z plane and we're going to use the Earth's magnetic field to check the reading. So basically when it's flat we should get one reading and then as we tip it up to 90 degrees we should get another reading. Um, and those should remain the same if the operation has been unaffected. So I've got the frequency counter connected to the GPS disciplined oscillator and the GPS disciplined oscillator has been running for a few days now so it should be pretty much homed in exactly on 10 megahertz so we should be getting really accurate readings here so this should uh, give us a high degree of confidence that what we're seeing is actually real and not down to measurement error. So I'm now going to stick this in the ultrasonic bath and we'll do the test. So I'm not sure if you saw that, I couldn't talk over it because uh, it was already uh, killing the microphone. But effectively there was no perceivable difference in the output voltage from the capacitor in and out of the ultrasonic bath. So most of that noise was just being picked up by uh, the long leads to the oscilloscope. So what we'll do now is let's see if the circuits are still working. So we can test the 32 kilohertz oscillator, let's turn that on. And there we go, so that seems to be behaving properly. I'm expecting if any of the crystals are likely to get damaged it to be the 32.768 kilohertz crystal because that's very similar to the kind of frequencies that are used in these ultrasonic baths. Let's try the actual crystal on its own with the separate oscillator circuit. And that one's also okay. So what I'll do is I'll just connect these up to the frequency counter again and take the readings and then we'll have a little look at the MEMS accelerometer. Right so apologies for the setup here, I didn't have time to write a proper interface. So we're going to be using an SPI adapter to write and read the data directly to the accelerometer. So we're going to be looking at the Z axis which means as we change the orientation of the PCB we're going to be seeing the reading in this direction or in this plane sorry to the accelerometer. So sending the message AD tells it to look at the upper 8 bytes of the Z axis and then during the zero, 00 phase is where we get our reading back. So if we click send, click it a few times, you can see this reading here is giving us 40 and when we're exactly in plane, sorry, perpendicular to the Earth's magnetic pole, we should be somewhere near zero, which you can see there. And as we tilt the PCB, that number is continuously varying. So that all appears to work exactly as expected. So I've not seen any indication that the MEMS accelerometer has been affected by the ultrasonic cleaning. So what I'm going to do now is leave the board in for quite a long time and see if we get any effect because just looking at the data so far we're not really seeing any kind of significant change in the frequency. In fact you get a bigger change in frequency just by placing your finger near and providing the crystals with a little bit of heat. So at the moment I'm not seeing any significant effect.
Right, so I've concluded the testing and the PCB itself was in the bath for a total of two hours the second time, so an hour on each side, which is pretty much excessive for any case. So I don't think anyone's ever going to leave it in the bath that long. And as you could see, the results from the accelerometer, there's absolutely no difference before and after. The accelerometer seems to be completely unaffected. Let's take a little look at the actual results of the crystals. First of all, the 8 megahertz crystal with the separate oscillator, and we're seeing basically a NAFL change. So between the non-cleaned and the first clean, which is a total of 8 minutes in the bath four on each side, we saw 5 hertz change. Second time was only 0 0.59 hertz. With the 32.768 kilohertz crystal, we only saw a change of 18 millihertz the first time, and then a change of 1 hertz the second time. Then with the 8 megahertz oscillator, we saw some quite big changes, so 309 hertz and 215 hertz. Then we've got the 2.048 megahertz oscillator and basically NAF will change there, so less than 1 hertz uh, each time. And then finally the 32.768 megahertz oscillator, so a 23 millihertz difference and then 5.2 millihertz the second time. So. Really, there's not anything significant that we can draw from there, and I don't think it's worth sticking it in the bath for any longer because we're not seeing anything like a change that would indicate that we're doing some permanent damage to these particular oscillators. So what does that mean for our ultrasonic cleaning? Well, basically, what I'm suggesting is for most cases, you're going to be fine dunking your PCB in the bath if you stick to some reasonable time limits and use some precautions. So what I've found generally is if you put your PCB in the ultrasonic bath for about four minutes on each side you get a completely clean PCB and this has been in there for two hours now and it's completely spotless but not any different significantly than the first run. The other thing is you might want to check the temperature of the ultrasonic bath so this actually cleaned at room temperature we didn't need to raise the temperature up typically I'd suggest that you have it somewhere between 40 and 60 um, and I didn't test that, but I don't think that's going to have any significant difference. As soon as you've cooled down these components, these aren't really temperature sensitive anyway in terms of storage, so that's going to be fine. I think the types of components that you're going to see damage are those that are going to be damaged by liquid ingress anyway. So MEMS sensors that have a port, so MEMS microphones and pressure sensors, almost certainly will get damaged unless there's some kind of sticker over the port. There are lower frequency crystals that are actually quite large in geometry and those would probably need some caution. You're just not going to see the kind of um, oscillation in these tiny oscillators so the, the high frequency ones definitely in the megahertz region are going to be absolutely fine. They're so small in geometry you're not really going to get the resonance that would be needed to destructively destroy some of these crystals. Other than that, I think you'd want to pay some caution to mechanical devices like switches and relays. And if you have a look at the Omron data sheet in particular, it specifies certain devices that have been tested and certified for ultrasonic use. But even those that are hermetically sealed, they don't recommend sticking in the ultrasonic bath. So I definitely heed caution for those types of devices. But for your general PCBs, it looks like everything is fine. So thank you to PCB Way for providing these PCBs for this video. Take a look at the website, I'll put a link to them down below. Like I said, they're offering five PCBs for $5 without shipping. And then if you are a new member, there's a $5 voucher as soon as you register. So you can get your PCBs for free and only need to pay for shipping. So I hope you learned something today and hopefully this video was useful. Until next time, thanks for watching.